Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Today we are diving into a topic that's incredibly important but often overlooked, which is money habits that keep us poor. We all have beliefs and habits about money that shape our financial decisions. Some of these can actually hold us back. These habits can negatively impact our finances and we often uh, don't even realize them, especially when we were not taught about this uh, in school. So don't worry, in this video, we will identify those habits and will provide you with some actionable tips to change the beliefs and start building wealth. If you are new here, my name is Parul and I'm an economist by profession and I make videos on money management and getting financial freedom fast. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy today's video. So let's dive in. Habit number one, living beyond your means. This means spending more money than you earn. Many people rely on credit cards and loans to make up the difference. I understand that it's so easy to get caught up, you know, and um, having the desire of luxury lifestyle. And everywhere you, in the US, you see buy now, pay later schemes, and people often spend more than they can afford. To break this habit, you need to create a realistic budget and stick to it. You need to differentiate between your needs and wants and save for big purchases instead of using credit cards all the time. Uh, both me and my husband use credit cards a lot, but we still know what our limits are in terms of each category of our expenditures. And we try to teach the same things to our kids. There's no problem in wishing luxury, but you have to have enough money in your bank to afford that lifestyle. Habit number two, not having an emergency fund. Now, this is another big mistake many Americans make. I'm surprised with the data that many people don't have even one month of living expense saved in their savings account. Life is full of unexpected expenses, car repairs, medical bills. Without an emergency fund, these events can throw your finances in chaos. Aim to have at least three to six months of living expenses saved in a separate savings account preferably in a high yield savings account that can earn you much higher interest rate compared to other traditional savings account like from Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo or Citibank. So this cushion can help you avoid going into debt when unexpected expenses arise. If you are re my regular viewer, you know that I don't save my money in a traditional savings account and I only save in a high yield savings account. Right now, they are giving interest rate in upwards of 4% to 5%. The third habit that uh, keeps us from building wealth is the impulse buying. Now, these impulse purchases can quickly drain your bank account, whether it's a flash sale or a spur of the moment decision, these purchases all add up. To curb impulse buying, give yourself a cooling period. At least wait for 24 hours before making the purchase to see if it's really necessary. And try to stick to a budget when you do shopping. Okay, now moving on to the next habit, not tracking your expenses. When you don't track your expenses, it's very easy to lose track of where your money is going. So use apps or spreadsheet to monitor your spending. This can be um, helpful so that you can identify the area where you need to save money. In my house, I use tra um, some apps to, you know, just monitor where my money is going in each category. And then you also do it yearly and compare it over the years and see in which area you can cut back or if you see a pattern, you know, like for example, when your family size increases, your expenses in certain categories will increase. So you need to figure out, you know, where you can cut back without significantly altering your lifestyle. I have a comprehensive template for budgeting uh, and I will share it with you in the description below. You can edit it and customize it based on your family lifestyle. Now, the next habit is when you are only paying the minimum amount on the credit cards. Paying only the minimum amount on the credit card can keep you in debt for a very long time. So try to pay your credit card balances in full to avoid any late charges. And uh, this can reduce the principal amount faster. Cut back your expenses and save aggressively, especially in the early years of your careers when you are single, so you can tackle credit card debt more effectively. 
Any debt that has an interest rate of 8% or more needs to be tackled first before you start investing because nowhere in investing there is a guaranteed return of 8% or more. Okay, this one is uh, the biggest one that I'm talking about and it is neglecting to invest. It is surprising that many people miss out on the opportunity to grow their wealth by not investing. When people do not invest their money, they miss out on potential growth and compounding interest that could improve their financial situation. People sometimes confuse investing with trading or speculating in the stock market and they fear that the risks are too high and they rely solely on savings accounts. And here I need to tell you that investing is done for the long term and uh, so you can get good returns. Before that, there is no guarantee that you will get good returns because minimum you need to invest for eight years to see good growth in your investments. Um, usually there are a lot of volatility and short term fluctuations. You know, if you're looking at stock market index in the US, which is the S&P 500, uh, but over the long term, it has performed really well. On an average, historically, it has given around 10% return every year when your money is invested for at least 8 to 10 years. Also, you need to invest in a diversified funds, uh, like especially uh, the ones from Vanguard, like Vanguard S&P 500 index funds or, SN, uh, or Vanguard um, S&P 500 ETF. Both are good options. So you need to increase your financial literacy. I have many videos uh, on this channel. So if you have time, please make sure to check out my playlist and uh, you can educate yourself about stocks, bonds, real estate, and other investment options. The next bad habit is ignoring financial planning. Failing to plan is planning to fail. Without financial planning, you might find yourself drifting financially without clear goals. Set short-term, long-term financial goals and create a plan to achieve them. This includes saving for retirement, paying off debt, and investing for your future. I've made separate videos on this topic, which talks about various options available to you for short-term, medium-term, and long-term investment. Another money mistake people make is not buying life insurance, especially when you have dependence on you. You could look into the pros and cons of both term insurance and whole life insurance and see which one suits you better. And I plan to make a separate video on that topic soon. We need to ensure that if something happens to us, our loved ones who depend on us financially don't struggle. Okay, this is related to the previous point, but it needs a separate mention, which is inadequate retirement savings. Many Americans are not uh, planning for their retirement and they don't have uh, too much save for their retirement. They are solely relying on social security benefit. We don't know how much social security will pay us in future. So having a retirement investment through your employer 401k or individual retirement accounts like IRAs or Roth IRAs are very important because they are tax advantage. So they also reduce your taxable income. The other habit that keep you from getting financial freedom is when you rely on a single income stream. Relying on single income can be risky because if you lose your job or you have pay cut or something, then you, your uh, you know, finances can deteriorate significantly. So try doing some side hustles or have some passive investments options like rental income or, you know, maybe you know invest uh, in in a fund which gives you dividend earnings or at the very least have your money saved in a high yield savings account so that you get more interest per per year okay so the next one is when we are trying to uh, show off and keeping up with the jonases so when we're trying to match lifestyle of our friends families or neighbors this can significantly put financial strain on us if we are not uh, ready for it so we need to be wealthy instead of, you know, pretending to be wealthy. So you don't need to match someone's lavish lifestyle if you cannot afford it. In fact, most millionaires who are wealthy, they achieve it by frugal living and have very modest lifestyles even when they are wealthy. You don't have to show it off to others because you don't know if they have that luxury that they're affording it or is it through debt so don't pretend to be rich instead be rich by saving and investing 
aggressively, especially when you are young. So you can reap the maximum uh, returns from compounding, which brings me to the next point that many people are not aware of the power of compounding or they underestimate it. We've all studied compound interest in school, but how many of us understand it properly so that we use it in our real lives? I have a separate video on the power of compounding that you can check it out here. But when we don't understand the importance of compound interest, we lose a lot of money because money keeps accumulating and it doubles every period. So as the years pass by, the growth is not linear. It is exponential. So it is better to start investing as soon as possible, uh, preferably in your 20s uh, when you start earning and uh, consistently doing it till you retire will give you huge amount of interest but even if you think that you have missed those years it is still better to start now as they say better late than never because you can still reap the benefits of compounding for uh, years to come so compound interest can also work against you so as i mentioned it is important to pay off any type of debt which has an interest rate of 8% or more so that you don't get into that trap of you know compound interest that has built up that you need to pay off okay so this next habit is when you're losing money by indulging in bad habits like smoking excessive drinking or gambling so this goes without any saying that smoking is bad for your health but it is also very very bad for your wealth if you actually calculate the cost of cigarettes and for however many years you've smoked, you will see that this is the money that you could have invested and it would have grown so much by this time. So if you smoke, please quit as soon as possible, both for your health and for your wealth. At the same time, I will say gambling, buying lottery tickets, those are bad habits. The odds are very, very low. So try not to get into these uh, type of habits which are financially draining for you. This habit is more common in the youth and it is not practicing delayed gratification. In today's world, everybody wants everything that moment. As soon as people start earning, they want to splurge on expensive cars, they would you know, rent a very good apartment or maybe even buy a house uh, without even having 20% down payment for that. And they don't realize the cost associated with it. Many times when we have instant gratification, we have larger impact, negative impacts on our future earnings. So this is last one for today's video. And this is when we fail to negotiate uh, when we're doing some purchases, for example, it's related to your car. If you can negotiate the price, usually the car dealers can give you a better rate because they want to get the sale done. Also in your job, you can find out if you are paid fairly. So you can look up uh, online to websites like salary.com where they'll give you the median salary for your occupation in your area. And then you can have a conversation with your employer if you think that you're underpaid and what are the skills that you need to enhance your chances of getting a raise. At the end of the video, I want to just say that when we follow these right strategies, it can significantly improve our financial health. And by taking these small steps towards changing these habits, you can achieve financial freedom much faster than you thought. I hope uh, through this video, you can identify which of these habits apply to you and how to take the steps to change them for your better financial future. And if you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my next one. Take care. Bye.